How to build an online form. In this video, I will show you all the basics that you should know before starting to create forms. But before we begin, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel for more useful content, and let's get started. So let's start! Here in the templates gallery, you can choose a template of your liking and customize it to your needs. But today, let's start from scratch and explore all the different ways that you can build your form. So let's click here on blank to make a new form. As you can see, here are all the tabs that you can use. There is the Edit tab, Settings, Design, Notification, Calculator, and Results. Here, you can upload your logo if you wish to. Right now, we are in the Edit tab, where you can see all the different available field types that you can add to your form. Here, you can add a title to your form, simply click on it and write down your title. And right underneath it, we have the form's description where you can add your text and add an image or a link if you wish to. Underneath, we can see the field canvas, where all your fields will be added to and here on the left is the fields list, where you can select any field types that you need. Like this one for example, let's drag this text field and drop it into the fields canvas on the right. Let's use it for asking for user's full name. If we click on the field that we just added, on the left here, we can see the field's properties and you can tweak it as you want it to be. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see the default success message field that is already existing on any blank form. This field is the success message your form users will see after submitting your form and you can customize it however you want it to be, like for example, add a text, an image or a link to it. If we scroll down to the success message, we can see the success button text. The default text is submit, but you can change it to something like submit now, for example. Let's go back to the fields list and add an extra success message field. Let's name it, you failed. You can create multiple success messages and decide to show the one that's more relevant to the user's responses. Keep watching as I'll discuss this in the logic tab shortly. Now let's add another question to the form. Here you can choose for example a single choice field, which means your users can only select one option out of the options that you add. A multi-choice field is the name style except your users can choose multiple options. And you can limit the minimum and maximum number of selectable options in the properties of this field. Here you can also see a yes-no field, which means your users can choose between yes and no. Also, the like and dislike field type lets your users respond to a question fast and super easily. Other field types include email, dropdown, long text, number, phone, date, website, file, time, city, video, matrix, table, product, signature, score, and CSAT. You can use the score and CSAT field types to let your users rate your products and services or share their opinion about the quality of a specific product. The CSAT or Customer Satisfaction field type has multiple icon options that you can change at any time. The Section field type is used for adding text, images, links and more to your form. Use the Hidden field to add a field to your form that's hidden and the users can't see it. It's great for submitting additional hidden information along with the user's data. The Lookup field helps you look up the data of another form and allow your users to select from it in the dropdown. With the email verification field, you can ask your users to verify the email address that they enter on your form. The custom validation field helps you set up custom fields that validate the response based on your preference. For example, you can create a validation rule for entering website URLs that start with a specific domain. Check out the description for a link to a tutorial. And with the variable field, you can build advanced calculations and formulas that are not possible anywhere else. So let's add a single choice field to this form by using the drag and drop and write down a question. And now, add options in the field's properties. In the field's canvas, you can usually delete fields and rearrange the order of your fields simply by using drag and drop. You can also duplicate a question if you need to, like so. And if you want to delete your question, simply click here. Now, do you remember that we added a second success message? Let me tell you why. If a user chooses option 2, pricing, you can edit the success message text to fit a unique message to whatever you want the user to see after selecting this option. And how to do this? By using logic. 
In the next video, I will dive deeper into logic and how you can use it. It is a powerful tool for more engaging forms and quizzes, so make sure to subscribe to our channel and enable the notifications to get notified when it's published. Now that you are familiar with the Edit tab, let's head over to Settings. Here you can customize the ending of your form's URL. You can also customize the whole URL. Find the video in the description to see how. If you select this option here, if you select this option here, you can enable the limit of one entry per IP option. Check out this in-depth tutorial that I left in the top right corner for you, so you can start using it. This option prevents users from submitting multiple times, which can be very helpful depending on what type of forms that you want to create. And the Show Tracking Code After Submitting the Form option is a great option for audience tracking. It can be especially helpful for so many reasons, definitely don't miss out on it and watch this tutorial. Here, you can automatically activate and deactivate your form after a dedicated date. You can also select the Send Form Data to Redirect URL option, which uses URL parameters to send the form submitted data to the redirecting URL so that you can use this data on the next page. Just remember that it only sends the data of fields that have an ID property in place. The Enable Partial Submits is a great option for lead generation. You can find information about it in the tutorial that I left for you right here. The timer is great for time tests and quizzes. Once the timer ends, your users won't be able to submit the form anymore. Here, the max responses you can see is empty, which means for now there is no limit, but you can set a maximum, for example 10, which means only 10 results can be submitted on the form. You can easily activate and deactivate the form here. The form with payment option can be activated if, for example, you are selling products or services on your form. Simply select the payment method that you have previously created from your formula dashboard. You can simply set a fixed payment amount or calculate it using the logic page. If you would like to know more about forms with payments and how to use these options, I've left for you another tutorial to check out. And finally, here you can add a custom GS to embed tools like Google Analytics into your form. Okay, so that was the settings tab. Let's head over now to the design tab. Here you can choose the style of your form. The multi-step form means each question of your form will be shown on different pages. The single step form means all your questions will be shown on the same page, and the widget adds a button to your website that opens the form in a widget-like format, like this. Your single step forms can have page break fields in between your questions and have pagination too. Right here, you can choose the modern view, which is a new look that we have added to forms, but you can also disable it to have the more classic view of forms too. The fields layout works in the classic view, and it lets you show your form questions in a responsive two-column look, or keep them in one. Here you can disable the show form title option to hide the form's title. You can enable this option to shuffle the order of your fields. And the shuffle the order of choices on fields option shuffles the order of options inside all single and multi-choice fields on your form. Here you can change the font of your form using Google Fonts. Below, you can change the theme and colors of your form by either choosing them separately or using one of the pre-made themes here. If we keep scrolling down, you can add a background image and choose either the full screen option or the cover option, which looks like this. You can also add a shadow color on top of your full screen background image to make the form questions look bolder. Here you can customize the text on the buttons and messages like for example general text, like the start button, or fields text, like the drop-down fields default placeholder, or also the validation text, like for example when the user hasn't entered a valid email address. And below, you can add custom CSS to customize the look and feel of your form even further. Awesome, now let's go to the notification tab. Here you can send the submitted data to the submitter, and you can also use an email template that you have previously created from your Formula dashboard. You can enable this option to send a notification email every time someone submits the form and you can forward the same email notification to up to 5 members of your team as well. Here you can use an email template for you and for your team. If you would like to know more about custom emails and how to use them, check out the tutorial that I've left for you in the top right corner of this video. If you click save here, this pop-up message will appear with these options. Here you can copy the form's URL and paste it on social media to share it with your audience. Here you can view your form and if you click on Use in Website, you can embed your form. Select one of the options, such as iframe, script, widget or chatbot, and simply copy the code Formula gives you and paste it to your website. And it starts to work right away!
To view your data, head over to the Results tab and here you can see a table view of your responses. From here, you can filter your search by either date and by tags. You can also sort the responses. And here, you can easily search manually. Here, you can easily add a new row if you wish to. On the next page, you can view your responses in the chart view for a more overall view. Now you can start creating forms, quizzes, and surveys super easily. I hope this video was helpful and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and please don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and share with your friends. Happy formaloing!